Welcome, Allison. I think you're on mute. Let's see if you can unmute it. Oh. oh, here I am. I don't know what was going on. Hi, it's so nice to meet you. And sorry, I forgot to tell you ahead of time. Uh, yeah, I'm on my fiance's uh, account. So that's why it says Luke's story. <laughs> sorry about that. Oh, no problem. I figured that was it. I had seen him on your account. So I, okay. I was familiar with the name. So I'm like, okay, okay. good. <laughs> Yeah, we're in a in a bizarre living situation. Our renovations are continuing and we're in this temporary place. And this is like the computer that has the proper, you know, interview set up and it's just always logged into his account. So that's the story there. But it's great to meet you. Oh, it's so great to meet you, too. Thank you so much for coming on and talking with me today. And thank you for your emails. Also, that was really helpful to see just to know <laughs> in advance about those, you know, distinctions and about cockroaches. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, totally. And um, yeah, it's funny too, because I saw that you had put the questions down there and I almost didn't even scan them just because uh -huh. like, I just, you know, like to, uh, for whatever reason, just be live, but then something told my eyes to go down. I was like, oh, these are actually good, good notes to, to share back. <laughs> so yeah, it worked out well. Amazing. Yeah. I mean, I like to flow too. So I feel like we may not, I may not even ask you all those things, but I figured at least I'll have some idea in my head of where to kind of go. And totally. I feel like there's so much that you've done and learned and huh. gathered that I'm just, Every I feel day. like I could do multiple <laughs> interviews with you, you know? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And currently going through some big learnings as we are chatting. So yeah, learning every day. Does anyone ever tell you you look just like Courtney Kardashian or Courtney <laughs> looks like you? Do you hear I, that? I do get that quite often. <laughs> yeah, it was funny because yeah, as soon as your face popped on, I was like, Oh, wow, Kardashian doppelganger <laughs> situation. That's so funny. Yeah, you have a lot of similarities. I think your smile uh, and eyes, I mean, kind of the whole thing, but yeah, it's funny. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, shall we just dive right in? Yeah, sounds good. Okay, amazing. Do you have a bio photo before we do that? Actually, I just wanted to ask you. Oh, a bio, a picture? Yeah. Yes, I can email that to you. Okay, perfect. Yeah, then I'll just use the one that you prefer. Okay. Okay, amazing. Well, we'll go ahead and start. I'll probably record an intro separately. Okay. Um, so we can just dive right into it. And I can um, read your bio on that, or I can just read it right now. Yeah, whatever, you know, if you want a second to glaze over it. I know it, I was busy this morning, so apologies, I couldn't get it to you until. Oh, right no before. problem. But yeah, take a take a minute if you want to read it and whatever you want to do. I'm I'm fine. Okay. Actually, yeah, let's let's start here. So I'll read it and then I'll introduce you. And then I will ask you that first question because I feel like that's what I'm gonna do for all my mm -hmm. guests. It's mm -hmm. such a I feel it's a good opening question. So yeah, it is. it'll lead us on a journey and you can talk <laughs> about anything that's current for you or anything from the past or your book or just however. Great. You know, you want to dive in. So, okay. Well, welcome back to the True to Yourself podcast. I'm Ananta Ripa Ajamera, and I am so delighted to be joined today by Allison Charles, who is a revered shaman, seer, and spiritual teacher. She lives in Austin, Texas with her husband, Luke Story, Black Cat, Jelly Bean, and Dog Cookie. She is devoted to being of service by living by the calls of inner wisdom, mysticism, energy medicine, and shamanic practices she has mastered through her studies with spiritual teachers, both of and beyond this world. She leads global courses, events, and talks to reconnect people to their fullest power and confidence through sacred practices. Allison has been a leading pioneer in bringing rituals and shamanism to places it's never been before. She is host of Ceremony Circle podcast and the best-selling author of Animal Power, 
Allison's power animal shamanic journey was named a top meditation to try by O, the Oprah magazine. She has been called a leading shaman for expanding others into their full gifts and power and a full-fledged guide into your psyche by Forbes and the next big thing by Marie Claire magazine. Allison was resident energy guru for the top wellness platform and has collaborated with a range of additional media outlets and brands, including the New York Times, HBO, National Geographic, Well and Good, Mind, Body, Green, L and Self. Welcome, Allison. It's so wonderful to have you with me today. Thank, Thank you so you, much dear. for being here. Of course. Thank you, dear sister, for the invite. It's been lovely to meet you over Instagram, and I'm happy to see your face here today. Oh, thank you so much. You have had such a fascinating life, and your journey is so intriguing and inspiring. And I feel that there's so much I want to know from you and would love to be able to uh you know, just absorb and really integrate. Animals have been a really, really important part of my own spiritual journey and connecting mm. with their essence has been a really helpful guide for me personally. And I have actually worked with a shamanic healer this year to go even deeper into my own journey as I prepare for releasing my second book next year on mm. Goddess Durga. So I have such a deep appreciation for the kind of depth of work that you do and where it can lead people. Mm. And I want to talk all about it as much as we can in this limited time. Um, but I first wanted to just begin with you. Like, can you tell me about a time when you really knew from within that you needed to be true to yourself and what <laughs> that experience was like? Yes, uh, this is all so good. And thank you for sharing what you shared. And I loved how you expressed um, a description of shamanism of, of where it can lead you. I just think that that was such a beautiful way to put it because that truly is the most succinct, succinct way you can describe the path of shamanism. It's just a never ending infinite exploration. So that was really lovely. And so happy to hear you already work with the animals. I can't wait. I'm sure at some point we'll chat about which ones. And yeah, to your question, huh, I mean, I definitely had, and I still continue to have, I'm currently in the process of having many defining awakening revelatory moments in my life but the one that really stands out was my spiritual awakening divine intervention day because it was so miraculously cataclysmic and it really was the moment in time that uh created a a separation point or a marking point, I should say, between my unawakened life and my veil lifting awakened life. And I had really um, up until that moment been so deeply suppressing my spiritual gifts and truth and divine wisdom and the shamanic calling that had always been inside of me and just waiting for me to allow it to activate. And because I was denying all of those truths within me. Yeah, that life changing day required all of my um, spiritual allies in the unseen realms to blow the whistle and turn on my clear audience gift to hear messages. And, um, you know, there is a whole story behind it, which I'm always happy to share, but it does, you know, in order to honor it, it does take a little bit of time. So without getting into the full details, um, yeah, it was it was from that veil lifting drop to my knees moment where I then really got to see the truth of who I am, um, of what this earth experience is about, and also the truth of a relationship. It uh, really was the instrument for my awakening. And from that day, and seeing truth that even makes me kind of purge up some stuff, you might, I just burped a little bit on the mic. Sorry if you could hear that, but uh, oh, no. You know, it, it was it was a big moment. And from that time, 
the decision I made was to surrender and and speaking that willingness of surrender to great spirit and great mother earth and my own soul, it has been from that operating place that my life has just grown every single day and miracles and richness and, you know, challenges too. Um, but in facing those shadows and challenges, just gaining strength more and more every day and who I truly am. Wow. Wow. That's really, really so incredible. Um, I mean, now I'm really curious what the whole story was, if you want to go there. I'm, I don't know how much time it would need, but it's, it's most welcome if you feel it's in the flow. Yeah. I mean, I do think it, it can be of service. Um, so I'll, I always try to just uh, say it as simply and clearly as I can. So in a nutshell, I had been in a very long-term dysfunctional relationship. And at times that dysfunction um, would express in varying degrees of abuse and um, the suffering and, and varying levels of anguishing pain uh, would only seem to grow and grow and grow. And so it created a very confusing time in my life because it was over 16 years that I was in that relationship. And wow. um, yeah, and you know, there were a lot of deep threads of codependency and massive denial. And that denial piece is, is really one of the main things that kept me in that cycle of insanity because mm -hmm. I was just at that time too afraid, you know, too afraid to face the truth. And um, I thought it was safer to be an illusion. And now having been on the uh, spiritual and shamanic path for many, many, many years, um, I, I of course know the opposite to be true. And that's kind of the, the portal that I've been in lately is just, you know, facing some really, really um, wildly uncomfortable truths. But I know, I trust in that way now. And I know the only way out is through. Um, but at that time I was not in that place. And so <clears throat> my, um, ex fiance and I, we had called things off. We called the marriage off and I'd moved to New York city on my own. But then many months later, he had circled back around and was expressing things that in 16 years, I'd never heard him say before. So I thought, wow, have things finally changed? Mm -hmm. And I wasn't <clears throat> wanting to rush back into the relationship, but in us deciding to give it another go there was this day where we were about to go out publicly as a couple again and um right before we were about to walk out the door i was walking through my bedroom to finish getting ready and he was asleep on the couch and that's when all of my guides came in to not let this cycle open up another round again and uh, as I was walking through my bedroom, I heard spirit speak to me and tell me to stop and turn around. And it was a you know voice clear as day in my right ear. And I did stop and I did turn around. And the second I did that, my eyes landed on his phone on my bookshelf. And I could just feel energetically, you know, in hindsight, <clears throat> there was a definite shift in the room where I know that it was my angels and guides all coming in to hold that space for me. And as I walked over to the phone, the voice spoke again and said, brace yourself. What you're about to see is going to rock your world. And I did not know his phone code, but if um, anyone in your audience is familiar with automatic writing or spirit writing, it's when divine works through you. And some people even write their books that way. And that force worked through me. And I punched in four numbers that opened his phone. I don't even know to this day what those numbers were. And uh, what I saw was the evidentiary truth that I needed to face to finally see the truth. And it was really that first shamanic cave initiatory moment for me. And that phone represented that cave by me entering into that cave. It led me to that Joseph Campbell quote, the cave you fear to enter holds the treasure you seek. And, <clears throat> you know, for me, um, the last little intriguing thread of this is, um, and I used to not share this story too publicly just because, um, you know, it's, uh, it's pretty big medicine, but 
in some of my past life work, I came to understand that in one of my past lives, um, my husband had betrayed me through um, infidelity and I was so hurt by it. Um, this was like in a many hundreds and hundreds of years ago life when I was living in an old Eastern European port town. But when, um, when I finally convinced him in this past life to come home that day after I'd found out this news of him having an affair. <clears throat> when he got home, I was so overcome by rage that I actually killed him. Oh, wow. Yeah. See why I don't really tell that story too <laughs> much. Um, but it just, it, it's, it's helps people to understand, you know, why this type of facing of this type of information was the scariest for me and why it held within it the greatest alchemizing um, power for me this lifetime. And, you know, because we're all complex spiritual and human beings that carry with us so much and past lives uh, and what we've experienced in past lives is a lot of, of what we hold within us. And so it was the beginning of me really transmuting and healing and alchemizing um, that fear that had just been held so staunchly within me still in this lifetime. And so, um, you know, I, I asked my ex to, to leave and to never contact me again. And it was after he finally left that I, you know, fell to the ground and, you know, my whole life was obviously turned upside down. And um, it was when I flew to Indiana, where I was from, that my additional spiritual gifts began to come on board and online. Uh, and telepathy being one of them and clairvoyance and over the course of the next week spirit was showing me my whole life in truth without the veil of denial so it was kind of loving rude awakening after loving rude awakening for many consecutive days and that's what led me into that surrender moment so yeah you know oftentimes relationships are our greatest teachers and mine uh, was definitely that <laughs> Wow. Wow, Allison. Well, first of all, thank you so much for sharing that. I know that takes a lot of courage and strength to be able to do. And I I can totally relate to you with a wide variety of different relationships where I feel like I played out all these kinds of patterns. I wrote about them in my second book. So mm -hmm. I, you know, kind of delayed the publication date of it just to get myself ready to be able to, you know, face the fact that first of all, I did this. I'm, I'm just enjoying that right now for myself. Like, yeah. wow, I faced my reality. I wrote the truth. I understood it spiritually. I understood it karmically I understood I took responsibility I own my power I feel that the only way really truly to overcome codependency is through spirituality yeah. you know like I don't feel that there's any other way that we can actually like get out of that because it's just only when we truly awaken that we are able to realize that we don't need anyone else we don't need anything else mm -hmm. but our true self to really anchor us and to guide us mm -hmm. and you know at the same time I'm like hmm, okay this is really great for me to kind of be with my truth and be with this sacred experience of writing but then like wow anybody I meet can know that all this about me yes <laughs> another level of like I'm going to just prepare myself over the next year, you know, I'm and so glad you're doing spirit. that. <laughs> I'm so glad you're taking that honoring space for yourself to prepare energetically, medicinally, mind, body, spirit, soul, because, you know, having just gone through uh, writing my first book in card deck, there is something about the finality of the written printed word. Yeah. It's got a different texture and essence than even us, you know, just talking about these experiences here, the book carries with it a different gravity. Yeah. And so I'm really glad that um, you're doing that, that self honor piece. And I also want to agree um, in the taking responsibility, like all of those categories or pillars that you <clears throat> rattled off. It's, it's, 
you really honed in on the full big scope and picture that we have to lean into. And um, yeah, taking responsibility while, you know, my ex definitely had more of the addiction pieces and, and, and some other aspects that I didn't carry with me. Uh, what I did carry with me was the denial and codependency and, and other, you know, realizations that I definitely have taken responsibility for because, you know, it is a dance and any relationship is a co-creation. So you have to face, I had to really look at why did I allow myself to stay in that? Why was my self-respect and, and lack of self-worth, you know, why was it so low that I let myself and my being and my body get dishonored and, and abused at times for almost two decades? That's, you know, you really have wow. to confront those pieces. Wow. Yeah, that takes so much courage and so much strength. I mean, that's really a long time to go on in that. And I don't know if you've had a Vedic astrology reading, but I would be really curious if like, that period was like a certain planetary kind of karmic thing because in my shamanic reading uh, or journeys that I've gone on this year some of the discoveries that I had through the person I work with were actually confirmed by my Vedic astrology chart mm. and I'm like whoa like we thought we came to that and it was an incredible revelation in and of itself but it's like unseen right it's in that sort of mystical realm of past lives and stuff like that but then vedic astrology is like the, one of the oldest maps basically of your past life karma it's not about prediction because we have the free will to be able to play out that karma however we will but it's written somehow that you will have this period of this kind of thing and it's so interesting because whatever i was going through which is now resolving, she had said, oh yeah, this, 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 and this, and your reader was exactly right. Wow, that's powerful. Yeah, I've actually never done it the, the Vedic way, but it's been recommended. Um, yeah, some of my dear friends uh, go in that direction, especially for astrology and uh, have been recommending it. So maybe I'll try it out. It's just really interesting, right? Because when the different modalities converge like that. I feel like they're leading mm. us to such truth. Totally. And it's, um, I love that you brought that up because even just recently, you know, anymore, I don't, I don't do too many readings. I just, I feel so strong, so strongly, um, in connection with the trust of the wisdom inside of me and my direct connection to great spirit, and great mother earth that often feels, uh, very much enough on a daily basis, but <laughs> Um, you know, recently, uh, when I had a dear sister, Florencia Friedman on my podcast ceremony circle, mm -hmm. um, she works a lot in the Mayan traditions. And so I had a Mayan cosmovision, uh, Mayan cosmology reading done by her. And I just intuitively knew, I, I was like, I know I'm supposed to sit with her and have her share with me about, about this way. And it just, yeah, I, I, I was laughing and crying the whole time she was doing the reading because I just knew that I needed to hear and connect those dots into the own revelations that I was having, the connecting of the dots with the way she does her reading, everything just made so much more sense. And then another woman who um, specializes in, um, oh, what's that, what's it called? Um, uh, Oh gosh, I don't know why it's escaping me, but it's a certain type of reading, your human design. Oh, uh-huh. Yeah, so she wanted to provide a, a reading for me and to have me on her podcast. So I felt into it, you know, cause I'm also very sensitive to, you know, and so I always do a lot of uh, checking in and I decided I would do it. And they were both in the same day and back to back. Oh, wow. and, yeah. And they both provided just such hilarious um, connecting of the dots for this big transformational time. So yeah, it is so beautiful to see how these different traditions and different, you know, integrity filled readers can really bring things into even stronger alignment for yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. And I'm so glad you mentioned that word integrity filled because, oh my gosh, I mean, that world of like people who have these psychic abilities and spiritual gifts that are clearly like inherited from past lives. Oh my gosh. Like the relationships with those people can be the most dangerous of all. And I do speak from 
personal experience there of like, whoa, you know, mm -hmm. to be involved in a connection with someone who's not having that integrity, but having the knowledge and having the yes. powers and the gifts is like yes. a big, big challenge. And that's one of the relationships that I had gone through and had to oh. be forced to really own my own wisdom and exactly what you said like stop suppressing my own intuition and my own ability to integrate the teachings and mm -hmm. then you know not to throw the baby out with the bathwater at the same time because all the ancient wisdom traditions have something really incredible and extremely powerful and true and wise to offer us but we just have to really separate out the the person from the the practices and the teachings a lot of times mm -hmm. and you know that can be such a difficult thing to do and now you know that I've removed myself from that and I've really like worked I had to really like work on develop re like connecting with the power of intuition and that's a chapter in my book because one of the nine goddesses of the Indian tradition of Navratri, which is a nine night goddess festival is actually located in the Agnya Chakra as it's called in the yogic tradition or the third eye. And it's about awakening intuition so mm -hmm. that we're able to uh, like yield the sword of discernment and use mm -hmm. or the shield of discernment and the sword of detachment to yes. cut away what no longer serves us. Oh and my gosh, really yes fearlessly owning that inner light right and it's like it's called the inner guru so we have to awaken that light within and it's it's so intense that we actually need help to do it and we need all of our spiritual connection and spiritual animals and you know everything to to be with us on that mm -hmm. journey and I always feel that I have them with me and I've always felt connected to lions especially since mm -hmm. my childhood since I can even remember and I remember my mom had told me once when I was a teenager that she saw a lion in my eyes and it scared her. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, oh, you know, like the one part is true. Yes, there is a lion here. But, oh, I don't want to scare you. Oh, if my power scares you, then, mm -hmm. okay, I'll start not being so powerful. I'll start mm -hmm. giving that away. And I think that pattern for me began in childhood as a kind of survival, emotional yeah. security, love securing thing, you know, which then I do know outlived its, <laughs> its purpose. And I had to go all the way there, right. To like retrieve that and yeah. like reclaim that knowingness and that kind of undoubting surety within myself that I gave away in exchange for some kind of conditioned love. Well, I totally understand. I had the same journey, but with my dad and, you know, and I know that we have the understanding of bless it all, you know, it's all, it's all a part of our, of our journey, but it's so intriguing. I'm being very honest when I say this, I brought my book over to right here was sitting on the chair here and I just opened it directly like directly to the lion page oh my god like all I did was open the book and the lion was right here and before I even look at the page what I was tuning into um the the lion the and the power and medicine and wisdom that it holds it can be very intimidating because it's medicine of honesty and it's medicine of the heart and if people are not in a place of readiness to hear um, what might be challenging, honest truths um, that come from the heart that would be hard to ignore or not face once the, the wisdom is shared, um, yeah, it can very much be a medicine that people want to turn away from or even run away from because on a deep soul level, they have an awareness that you hold something within yourself that is something they probably don't want to hear or face or acknowledge. So that was one thing that came in. Some of the other keywords that Lion uh, and the healing attributes it has are, it's very commanding energy. It's a very supreme ruler, um, yet it also has generosity and courage and a lot of dignity. Uh, and it also holds uh, enthusiasm and the energy of, of new friendship and, and community. So 
it's it's a very strong potent medicine those that have uh lion as a main ally within themselves wow it's so amazing that you read that and shared that and just opened up right to that totally you know this was the medicine then for me to be able to heal because i had to first of all go back to that experience where i gave away my power willingly for love and security and then you know years later so many years later i actually had a dialogue with my mom on text messages and she asked me are you a lion or a tiger and because I was talking to her about peacocks, which are her spirit animal, she really, um, or her power animal, as you call it, and she really resonates with them for their beauty, for their colors, for their um, symbolism. And they're also the symbol of India. So I feel like that's very fitting, like the national animal of mm -hmm. India or the national bird. And so then she was asking me, what about you? Are you a lion or a tiger? And I said, oh, I'm a lion all the way. And I said, I am actually a mountain lion because I had done some research that ah. mountain lions are connected with the mother goddess and they are connected with leadership without ego. Yes, yes, and embodied being, integrity filled leadership. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And not about not abusing power. Yes. Leadership that does not abuse power. But I accidentally didn't put the word not in. So it said a leader who does abuse power. And she said, that's <laughs> what I'm so scared. And I'm like, oh, sorry, that was not, that was a mistake. I that's meant to say so funny. a leader who does not abuse power. And I am Durga's lion. So you are always safe with me. I am here to protect you. And that is what this power is about. And that's what it's always been about. And, you know, she had said, then this is so many years later, after lots of work and lots of spiritual practice that, wow, you are truly one in a million to look out for us. We're so fortunate to have you on board. Jay Mataji, which means victory to the Divine Mother. Mm, that's so powerful. And it's such a testament of how these medicines can work. And also, you know, when you are a healer or leader or spiritual teacher of, of any kind, the massive trust in your own assignment and earth mission and the responsibility that we have to take on because, I mean, there are infinite um, pieces to the prism of walking. And I say prism, not prison, prism, P-R-I-S-M, the prism of walking on the hero's journey. There's so much that goes with it. But, you know, your sharing is one of the examples of one of the pieces because when we are in our alignment with our purity and our integrity and we know we're truly divinely aligned when we get an awareness of some information that does need to be shared with someone else um, then we have to check in again you know is it the right time because if it's not the right time it can cause more harm than good and there's just so many layers that we have to go through in just expressing what is being shown to us. And then when you got to that place of knowingness that it was time, then just, then we have to sit back and it's like, sometimes our medicine can taste bitter and, and very harsh tasting medicine to, to whoever hears it. Sometimes it tastes sweet and they enjoy it, but it, we never know how the medicine is going to taste or function or how long the medicine is gonna have to be in the person and sometimes the person may not come around and say what your mother shared with you all those years later it may not even be this lifetime that they come back and say it or ever and that's another huge surrender piece of like knowing that we imparted the wisdom that needed to be shared through us from source and trusting that it will just work in the way and timing that it has to it's it's a really wild ride <laughs> You said it. I mean, it's true, right? Like, I feel so grateful and so fortunate that I was able to have that dialogue with my mom, but it took a long time. I had some other 
family relationships that really healed and transformed a lot sooner and quicker but this one took forever Mm -hmm. and this one I really had to like go deep within you know and really like dig deep and I feel that with other relationships after that they didn't all happen this way I feel like my mom really grew a lot she's really evolved and she's Mm -hmm. definitely on her path and she's now my student in the community so I loved that community was part of the lion uh, symbolism because I feel that it's been really beneficial to her and I've seen like the sun coming out in her she had an energy work session that I booked her for in New York and she told me that the person had the healer had seen the sun in her Can I just show you really quick though? But look, I turned to the mountain lion and one of its key medicines is the sun. says it right here. And you see the sun is in the art for the mountain lion for my book. So yeah, just saying. Oh my gosh. Can you please read me from that page? (laughs) Yes. The mountain lion's key healing attributes, having your eye on the prize, protection, healthy boundaries, embodied leadership, Fire and sun and wisdom are the key words. Wow. Wow. And what else does it say in your book? I'm so curious. Yeah. So within it, then um, on the next page, I share energy medicine messages. And this is speaking from the mountain lion. So let me tune in and see which one. Uh, Oh, leadership is not about trying to convince others to also join. It's simply about taking a stand for what you believe in and speaking and acting with honesty and heart. It says, I hold the power of the fire and the sun within me. If you are seeking clarity for next steps in your life, work. Oh, if you're seeking, if you are seeking clarity for next steps in your life, work with these elements spend time in the sun or near a fire and ask it to illuminate your path and there are there are about five other uh, messages but um I'll, i'll read this one more when being a leader feels challenging call upon me to provide extra fortitude and remind you that natural leadership abilities exist deep within you yeah wow yeah, so it's it's a lot about, you know, how the leadership of the mountain lion, it doesn't come from force or coercing or manipulation. It's about that embodied place, about you yourself getting to that place of sovereignty and trust and embodiment within yourself and, and, and leading and speaking and moving from that heart-centered true place rather than going into the shadow side and trying to like get someone to join. It's you walk the talk and embody it and they join from that place. Oh, Allison, I've been having so many chills and goosebumps like throughout our conversation, but this one really like, oh, wow. God. I'm mm-hmm. so grateful to hear that because it's just such a confirmation to me of, that path that I walked, which was very much alone and very much a sovereign one. And Mm. I'm so glad that it was, you know, because I think in the beginning, we all kind of want to convince people and tell them, you know, like what we're doing that's so helpful for ourselves. And I, I got cued into that early on. Let me not do that. Let me just do it myself and be so in the love and the joy of it that we can, you know, naturally bring people in just out of curiosity, you know, like just to see what it is and to benefit from it themselves, right? Like rather than like just telling other people what to do, the best way to lead is by really living it and Mm -hmm. then allowing that to speak for us. Then we don't have to work so hard. We don't have to exhaust our energetic resources to be able to simply walk the path that the divine spirit has laid out for us Mm -hmm. and i feel that that's where these ancient traditions like the vedic astrology and shamanism and you know so many other amazing modalities really help us to see what is our own individual calling and what is our own individual path and then what are those divine beings and beings in nature like the sun and like the fire and like the lion for me that can guide us on that journey back home to our true Mm -hmm. self yeah i mean we have infinite support within ourselves and 
within the physical world, especially of course, within nature and then in the unseen realms, like we are so held infinitely in all dimensions by loving messengers and medicines and messages that are just waiting to be invited in or trying to come in and coming in, but it's up to us. That's where it's a co-creative dance. You know, these messages can come in, but if we, you know, have our conscious awareness closed off and we're just stuck in ego or stuck in uh, a narrative or a belief that we want to just grip onto so staunchly that we're not when you're in those places, you're not able to see all the miracles and messages that are right there and coming into you and your and your realm at all times. Um, we have to do our part and take responsibility and and do our part of the work, which is being I mean, there's so much to that, but just one basic one is allowing yourself to be consciously aware and keeping your heart and your eyes open to what is coming in today to to help support my journey it's everywhere wow wow so allison how did you yourself come to this path were you always on a spiritual journey or were you working like in a more kind of mainstream capacity and then you met your power first power animal who led you on this journey or how, how did it happen yeah so you know it's been a it's been a mixture of both so even as a little girl, because I had a similar um, paradigm situation as you, in order to preserve the relationship with my dad, it was like I needed to suppress my seer abilities and my my shamanic and spiritual gifts if I wanted to continue to have a connection point with my dad at that time. And so I really suppressed things. However, there was enough you know, even if it was a small, tiny part of my soul and, and little shamanic Allison, there was enough of a sliver kept alive that really the only books I ever read, even as a young girl, they were in the metaphysics and self-help categories. It's like, I never read comic books or romance novels or anything like that. It was all like the healing power of colors and palmistry and numerology and, you know, feng shui and all of these things. And so I, looking back in hindsight, I could tell that my soul was just trying to keep enough of our truth alive so that it, the light didn't fully go out. Um, and, you know, I did take psychic courses. And, and yes. so that leads into the other part of your question. I definitely had mainstream jobs. I was a hip hop radio show host for many years. Oh, wow. <laughs> Yeah, for about like, I don't know, four plus years, I was the morning show host at a hip hop radio station. And, um, and because it was the morning show and as many hours long, we were the segment of uh, the day parts and radio where we could have guests and have and do interviews. And so of course, yes, there were a lot of hip hop and, and rapper guests on our show. But we <laughs> I was the one that was always like, doing dream analysis for our listeners who would call in or i would bring psychics into the studio and have them um, be a part of our morning show and so it's like even when i was in those kinds of jobs i was always finding a way to weave this medicine in it just wasn't done fully consciously you know mm -hmm. and um and then after my time in radio i, I was a uh, daytime television talk show host and you know, while TV, um, you know, I haven't watched TV in years. I do have Netflix, <laughs> um, which I watch sometimes just to like be a human and watch like too hot to handle or whatever, which I think is a great show, by the way, side note, but, um, but you know, TV, it can be, um, it can put people in a lot of sleepwalking trances and you really have to be careful of course, of, of what programming, you are letting yourself be uh, programmed into. <laughs> but uh, the talk show that I was hosting, it was wellness based. So we did have actors on to promote their new season of, you know, Chicago PD or whatever. But again, always trying to weave in um, spirituality and wellness. I was told a number of times to put my crystal necklaces back in my dress and not have, you know, them out and uh, mm -hmm. things like that. 
And so, so yeah, I mean, it was, it was always there, but it was through that divine intervention moment and surrendering that I was shown, you know, because in my surrender, I said, I clearly am not the well healed person I thought I was show me the way. And I was first instructed to have healing sessions with shamans and my aunt being one of them. And it was in that soul retrieval session that my core power animal, the black jaguar revealed. And then right, right after that, three other supportive power animal allies, the bear, deer, and frog came in. And it was those four that got me through that initial um, time in my life. Uh, deer it worked with me still uh, to this day in a very, very powerful way. It helped to keep my heart open and helped me get into uh, union with my sacred partner, Luke, who I'm with now. And yeah, the power animals and I, we have worked together for over a decade they trust me to be a voice for them. It was them who came to me. I was starting another book and I flew to Bali to write that book on surrender. And the power animals came to me and said, it's not that book right now. We mm -hmm. want you to write, to co-create a, a power animals guidebook with us. And so I called my agents and said, I hope you're on board because I live by the calls and I've been called to change the book. And thankfully they were. Four years later here, you know, I'm, I'm finally holding animal power book in my hands, um, lifetimes in the making, but you know, wow. those are just some of the examples, like it's just been so, I just want to take a moment to honor that relationship with them because, um, it has really taken the fullest level of trust on their part and my part, because I'll be on a stage in front of audiences of 10,000 or 15,000 people and people who want who are inviting a live power animal reading will come up on stage and i have to trust that they that animal will show up live in real time in front of all of those people um, i have to trust my own gifts and abilities and my connection to them and trust that they're not going to keep me hanging you know so uh it's been one of if not the most powerful relationship journeys of my life Wow. Wow. This is so incredible. And can you tell me a little bit about the black jaguar? I love that we have animals also that are in the same family. <laughs> yeah. 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 Big cat energy is huge for me. Uh, the black jaguar, I mean, they're all guardians in different senses, but the black jaguar is very much known as a potent guardian. Um, and its main medicine is reclamation of power, reclamation of your spiritual gifts. And it also really tunes into clear audience abilities and galactic connection, working with the unseen realms. And if you just, I always like to invite people um, if they would like to do this 10 second practice of just tuning in to what a black panther looks like when it's walking in the midnight time of a mist filled jungle and just picturing this big cat, this black jaguar traipsing through the jungle and the night, mist wafting around it, seeing into its eyes, just tuning into how it walks, how its paws hit the jungle floor, how it pauses to become aware and tune into its surroundings and how it moves with such power and mysticism and grace, that is the black jaguar and that is me. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love this because this is the kind of visualization I do for Marjar Asana, which is the cat pose in yoga. Mm. Literally like imagining that. And I had gone on a vacation one time to Mexico and it was raining a lot in Mexico and we were at a rainforest and we were kind of stranded in something where you can see the black jaguars mm -hmm. walking on mm -hmm. a little island of their own. That's and so I literally special. Wow. just went back there because I spent hours just watching them. And that's what the ancient rishis of the yoga tradition had done is simply observe nature to see how we can learn to embody nature's medicine and gifts. Mm -hmm. Gosh, I'm so glad you shared that and brought in your own ancient wisdom teachings and, and traditions into it. And yeah, it's uh, it reminded me too of, of how the black jaguar, it's not afraid of the night. It's not afraid of, of shadow work. It, 
it leans into those places and it's and it's wise and it takes its time and it trusts in the divine timing of it but it faces it and it walks through it oh, it's very much so, been a part of my journey yeah that's so beautiful it's so beautiful and i was curious you know you talked about uh you had suppressed your gifts for some time and then what was that journey like for you and how did you then reclaim your gifts and really mm -hmm. own them i know a lot of people have these gifts and they get denied or suppressed or you know just said no to gaslit by different people and it's it's really it is a journey it's a yeah. lot of hard work to be able to reclaim those and you clearly have done such an incredible job and i know that it's part of your divine purpose to help other people to do that so i would just love for you to share you know what can someone who's in that position where they have tremendous gifts and tremendous mm -hmm. you know knowledge and wisdom to share but they're too afraid to do that how do they mm -hmm. start that journey or continue that journey of emerging yeah i mean you do um unless you want a divine intervention which is not the easiest or most quote unquote, fun thing to have. I'm forever grateful for it. Um, you know, wouldn't change my path, but uh, there are ways where you don't have to have an intervention like that. It's, you need to get to a place um, oftentimes before one finally puts their hands up and says, okay, fine. I'm willing and ready to work with you, great spirit, source, universe, God, goddess, whoever it is that you're speaking to. Oftentimes, right before that, there can be extreme discomfort, you know, yeah. it's, it's your, and that's where our body intelligence is, is trying to get our attention. Before my awakening, I had like severe autoimmune disorders and severe anxiety disorders and was actually on anti-anxiety medication because I was having panic attacks. And those are just two examples, you know, of how our bodies, before it gets to a divine intervention place, our souls and our body and our emotion, our emotional intelligence, it's trying to tell us you know, you're denying your truth or your, you know, most powerful magnificence, your spiritual gifts, your light. And so if you feel that this resonates and you're in a place of readiness, I really do recommend what I've already kind of been harping on before. And oftentimes it is these most, what feel like simplest steps to take that are the most powerful. And having a surrender statement and, and speaking your willingness Again, you know, for me, it was speaking it to my divine wisdom, power, and truth that lives within me, AKA my soul, and mm -hmm. speaking it to great mother earth and great spirit. So that vertical line that runs from great spirit through my heart and down into great mother earth, that's where the name rock star shaman comes from. The rock part is great mother earth. The star part is source great spirit. And the sham shamanic part is, is my heart, my divine wisdom. And so, <clears throat> you know, speaking to whoever it is you want to speak to, the benevolent, benevolent spiritual um, energies, and saying you're ready, you're ready to get out of your own way, you're ready to finally stop suffering, and step into your your spiritual calling, your earth mission. But then, like I shared, you know, it's up to you to because the whispers will come with the wind. You know, the the gurus will come in, in forms of cab drivers. You know, you really have to be really awake and aware and ready. And maybe you carry a little pocket, your purse size notebook with you or your journal, and you're just ready at all times to jot down a message that has come in. And then the next step is you need to heed the guidance because a lot of people stop at that first stop. They might get a hit of a message and be like, oh my gosh, I really feel like I'm supposed to go to, you know, this metaphysical bookshop today. I know I'm supposed to, but then they don't do it. And so the next most important piece is heeding the guidance that comes in. And a lot of times it will be testing and challenging because it won't make logical sense, but that's by divine design because you need to learn to trust those inner muscles, to trust that intuition, that third eye. And you need to, to really, especially in the beginning, I call it divine connect the dots because those first steps you will take the 
the pebble on the pathway isn't there yet. It takes you stepping first for the pathway to appear. And once the divine sees your vulnerability, your courage, your willingness to answer what they're calling you to do, then the next steps will get a little bit clearer and louder. Um, so you do learn to trust yourself, but it's a process and a voyage that takes quite a while sometimes to gain strength. Um, especially, you know, with the big responsibility, if you, if the call, you know, because there's two different things that can happen. If you feel a call to shamanism, you may be feeling a call to lean into the shamanic healing arts, and you may feel called to go on a shamanic journey with a trusted shaman or go to a shamanic healing event. And the shamanic energies, the healing energies, may be beckoning to you and your soul may be in a place of readiness because that's what your soul needs at that place in your evolution. But then the other shamanic path is when one is truly called to fully activate within them the shamanic uh, you know, intelligence to become a shaman and to walk that path. And they're two you know, very different things. So it's you know, there is a lot to it, but it all informs and reveals and you will be shown the way. Um, but you gotta, you gotta open yourself up to it and heed the calls. Wow. Yeah. I love what you said that there is an action and follow through basically yeah. that once you hear the message or receive the message and it won't make sense to be able to then go where it's calling you. Yeah. And be, be willing to be open you know, I mean, I'm currently um, in a medicine, energetic medicine situation, which it hasn't landed enough in me for me to tell, you know, publicly exactly all the details. But I will just say one of the biggest teachings is to just remain open because I'm, I'm trying to think of how I can give one example that feels all right. Like I, an awareness came in for me about a particular person and 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 how I felt about the situation and about boundaries and about um, the energy, the current energy of a certain person. And in being willing to share that when I felt it was time to share that and express that and express it in ways that I felt guided and called to, that became medicine. And that that created the next part of the alchemical process, which allowed that energy to move into the next phase. And then from that phase and me staying open, it alchemized and moved into a new form and new guidance being given to me. And basically my point is where I'm at with my awareness of the situation today, I never would have guessed I would have have arrived to. And it's so unexpected, but I'm so clear in the next step. But it, and all of that happened in that alchemy because I chose not to be stubborn. I chose not to be an ego. I chose to keep my heart open. I chose to stay in my connection to source. And it's been wildly uncomfortable. Um, it's been really not the most fun work, but I know to trust this way. And I know to trust in the um, requirements that source is asking of me. And that's what I'm here to do. I live by the calls of divine, not by what my human being wants to do sometimes. So it's led me into really uncomfortable conversations that part of me does not want to have, <laughs> but I know I need to have them. And um, so it's just, you know, it, it, oftentimes it's, it's not, it's everything. The path of the shamanic way and the spiritual path is the allness in totality. And so we learn when we're on the emotional human spectrum of like not so fun emotions, we, we learn to trust ourselves to handle them and we learn to trust the medicine in, in them. And we learn to trust to ask those emotions and those teachings, what, what is in this for me? 
And um, it's when we don't deny or cut ourselves off from that full spectrum that we are in the full miracle and magnificence of this earth incarnation. Wow, yeah, that's incredible. And I'm so curious about your studies. I had read about how many different teachers and traditions you have encountered on your path and you've received their blessings to carry forward the wisdom and the teachings from those different lineage based traditions. Could you yeah. just talk a little bit about that? I mean, there was so much like just reading that was a whole bio of itself that mm -hmm. you've gone through and it's incredible. Yeah, it's been really beautiful, you know, and, and that's been one of, if not the biggest um, aspects of my shamanic path that I've needed to be an embodiment and integrity with. It's the fact that my shamanic way, like I've shared, it, you know, my primary teachers are Great Mother Earth and Great Spirit and really honoring um, because, you know, it can be for some a bit confusing because a lot of us have gotten so cut off from ancient truths within us and around us and mm -hmm. so cut off from these most ancient spiritual arts and healing practices that it can seem to the human brain and some very hard to conceive that one can awaken um their truths and their their spiritual calling and i use this in air quotes just by connecting to great mother earth our entire planet and connecting to great spirit it's like a lot of people want to hear like well who who told you that you're a shaman or, or or who taught you how to be one or where did you get a certificate from and 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 I'm just sharing this because for me, I needed to get into a place of trust and my connection to those three places first. And once that got into place, then I, you know, was being called to different traditions and different spiritual or indigenous elders from around the world. And, um, but I'm so glad that for me, I learned to have trust in the truths that lived inside of me and learned how to commune and receive the blessings of our planet and source before I learned from any other human walking the planet. Um, and yeah, you know, I have been incredibly fortunate to be blasted open from um, some Maori elders who just in hearing their native tongue and song and practicing some of their ancient traditions, it took me back to past lives as a Maori. And, um, you know, there are definitely, um, you know, some, some plant spirit traditions working with peyote that uh, have completely changed my life in the most beautiful ways. I mean, there, there have been a lot of um, cultures and indigenous traditions that I've been very, very fortunate to uh, be able to share space with and um, receive those transmissions and, and those wisdom teachings from, I mean, the Mamos uh, from Colombia, just they have i highly recommend if you don't know anything about the mamos to read up on them or you can actually listen to um i don't know what episode number it is in ceremony circle podcast my my show um but we we speak of their traditions and how they were guided to come out of the caves in the sierra nevadas and to start to come out back into the world more and to share uh, their teachings on how we can commune with and honor mother, mother earth and they devote their entire lives from the time they're little kids to these ways and to giving payment back sacred reciprocity sacred reciprocity and giving back to mother earth and um, various rituals and and sharing space with them a number of times you know the other interesting thing that 
you know, as a shaman, I always have to be honoring of is there are a lot of things and those rituals and ceremonies that they ask us not to share publicly, and it doesn't go beyond that particular ceremonial space. And then there are some things that they do want passed on and they do want shared. Mm -hmm. So it's a very complex um, path and journey, but um, yeah, that's a bit of how mine has worked. Wow. Wow. That's so interesting. So have, do you study with anyone currently? Um, let me see if I, I currently study, um, I'm currently studying with the spirit of Wachuma of San Pedro. So I'm currently studying with that spirit. And let me see, I'm also currently studying with, uh, Kana, who is another plant spirit. And let me see if anything else comes in one moment, please. And, and I would say it's safe to say, um, I have some dear friends and colleagues who uh, facilitate in certain ceremonial ways um, who have been really powerful space holders and teachers for me right now. And they're a couple and they go by the name of Talk Hole. So I will name them as well. Wow, wow, it's so beautiful. Can you tell us more about your book and how readers can be able to access the potent wisdom of the power animals in a way that will benefit them in their day to day lives, even especially if they're new to this? Definitely. Yes. So my brand new book, my book, my first book, baby, that finally got birth just recently is called Animal Power, 100 Animals to Energize Your Life and Awaken Your Soul. And as I shared, the animals came to me and they were like, let's do this. So <laughs> yeah, it's, um, it's, I, I mean, I have to be honest, it's an incredible book <laughs> that features 100 different animals and their teachings and wisdom sharings and healing attributes. And with each of the 100 animals, there's a beautiful work of art that um, of each animal that really embodies all of their wisdom. And I worked with an artist down in Brazil named William Santiago and um, incredibly talented man. And I knew the second I saw his work, uh, cause it was, it was a big decision for me, you know, who the artist was gonna be because I knew it needed to be an embodiment and it couldn't be just anyone. And I knew it was him. And I just want to honor him because um, actually right upon completing the art for this book, he passed away. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, um, it's been a very, you know, medicinal journey, mm -hmm. having that unexpected aspect woven into the process of the book. And the day that I got the news and I went outside to honor him and connect with him and thank him, a huge hawk flew just over my head and I knew it was him. And so we do have some limited edition uh, posters that will be out that have the hawk art that he drew. Uh -huh. And um, yeah, just sharing a bit about uh, him and honoring him and how he came to me. And um, yeah, he's very young. He was only 30 when he passed and he did such a great job. I mean, the art is just like, wow. it's so vibrant and colorful and wow. beautiful. Um, yeah, here's the crow. So. So yeah, I mean, it's filled with a lot of vibrancy, a lot of pure energetic medicine transmissions and uh, how you can work with it. It's a, it's a few different key ways. There's a lot of different ways, but the ones I recommend is if you're just noticing an animal continuously showing up in your life, like you hear someone talking about it, you go to bed and you dream about it, you turn the TV on and it's the first thing you see. That is a power animal trying to get your attention. It has teachings that it wants to impart to you to lessen the load for you, to have your journey be lighter and more free. So you go to Animal Power Book and you turn to that animal and you read the messages that it has and you start to get clear as to why that animal's showing up. And I also with each animal have a power practice that you can do, and that's a ritual or ceremony that you can go deeper in communing and getting to know that animal. So you learn more how to talk with it and to invite it in to, to continue to work with you. And you can also 
um, anyone who pre-orders the book, you get a free video guided shamanic journey that I facilitate, where in that journey, we call forward the power animal who most wants to empower your life at this time. And so then the animal that comes forward during the journey, yes, you can ask it questions, receive guidance, but then you can also go to the book and learn more. So those are just a couple of the examples. But once you start to learn what different animals represent, you know, bat, for example, really represents rebirth. And so if you're going through a time of deep transformation and transmutation, you can learn what animal to call upon to be with you to give you support because you know, we all need support. It's especially right now, you know, it, the whole planet is going through a shadow reveal and extraction and um, everything's feeling like it's getting turned upside down. But, you know, anyone who's gone through a spiritual awakening knows that it's a part of the process. It doesn't make it easy, um, but to a, we can definitely call upon these animals to help guide our way through. Wow, that's so amazing. So say like someone's going through grief and they've just lost a loved one, how would they approach your book? Yeah, I mean, in the back, there's actually uh, an index. So there are key words. So you can mm -hmm. go to um, the part that says grief and then see what animal uh, it tells you to tune into. So, uh, you know, I'm looking at this section right now. There's a, a section for courage, creativity, dreams, ease, energetic protection, groundedness, love, optimism, rising above, purification, peace, patience. And so you go to this glossary in the back and all of those categories then list the animals that you can go to that all can help with that area of life. Oh, that's so amazing. I and so for grief, I recommend the deer. That was the first one that popped in. There's different ones, but the deer is just such incredibly potent, powerful, but gentle heart medicine. So it'd be a good one to work with. Oh, and which one for love? Well, honestly, I mean, the deer has been a, that's been the main one for love for me, but let me see, let me go to the book and see which one stands out that we would want to recommend for love. Are you currently in a space of calling in more love in your life? I, <laughs> I feel like there is a lot of love in my life and I feel like it's, yeah, it's just a great one to know about because I feel like a lot of the animals I connect with are more related to power, to mm, wisdom, yeah. to yeah. uh insight to seeing beyond the veil of maya as we call it in the vedic tradition of spirituality and about soaring above things seeing from a higher vantage point but mm -hmm. i don't really know that there's an animal i connect with for that mm -hmm. you know and i'm in the process of also starting up a new community program called mm -hmm. the circle of life Beautiful. and i feel that it's an important medicine in itself to bring more community and the love that comes from community right that comes from the whole circle of life and i've been attracting students of different generations to this work of ayurveda for the body and just you know there is a mentoring or a buddy system that's part of the program and mm -hmm. then i feel that it's important to do more of that and i feel that in this day and age especially with the pandemic isolation is a big thing mm -hmm. for a lot of people and what hurts people a lot is like that feeling of separation from yeah. that. and so yes. even working with people what animal you know should i bring into that space like well here are some good options for you and then you can tune into which one feels the most resonant the armadillo is really good for love that's more for oh. healthy boundaries though but i love armadillo medicine the crab Deer, as I mentioned, flamingo, hummingbird, the macaw is very good uh, for love, and uh, starfish and swan. Swan was one that was kind of percolating up as you were describing. I would maybe look into swan energy for your group. Okay. Yeah. Amazing. Oh, that's so interesting. Yeah, it's just really wonderful to know about different animals for different purposes, because mm -hmm. I feel that I go to them for strength, you know, mm -hmm. and clarity. And yet the animals are there for all purposes and all different needs. And I feel that, yeah, grief and pain and, and heart, heartbreak and heartache are such important areas also. 
Yes. So Gorgeous. beautiful. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. This has been incredible. And um, wait, when does your book officially come out and where do we find your book? Yeah, so it's available for pre-order now. Um, you can get it anywhere books are sold, Amazon, Barnes and Noble. But um, if you want to get that free guided journey, so you can meet your power animal, the best place is my website. So that's AllisonCharles.com/animalpower, and uh, the book is officially being shipped out um, in October. So just around the corner, or depending upon when you put this interview out, it might already be October, and it might be available now. Amazing. No, I'll put it out sooner. Okay. Because it's just so <laughs> wonderful. And I love that you have the guided shamanic journey that people can already undertake. And oh, I just can't wait to receive my copy. It looks oh. so beautiful. And just knowing the story behind it and all of the love that you have put into it, I can just feel it just emanating and resonating and oozing through you as a channel for that and for really you know, connecting people with courage in that way too, mm -hmm. because courage is a quality of the heart mm -hmm. and of the healed and, you know, happy heart. Mm -hmm. And you are such an embodiment of that. And it's just been such an honor to be able to sit with you and share this space virtually. I feel like we're in person, but we're yeah, <laughs> totally. Yeah, I forgot there was a computer happening. Yeah, <laughs> thought right? we were just sitting on your couch. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's so, just yeah. been so amazing. Is there anything else you would like to share? Uh, let's see if any little nugget is left. One second, let me tune in. Mm. Yeah, I would just you know reiterate if you're feeling any sort of tug, pull, resonance, urging of that deeper part of your belly or your soul, just asking of you to step forward more within your own being, within your own life. It's worth it and you will find your way. And there's, you know, especially since I had my awakening over a decade ago, you know, so many others are, you know, have had theirs. And so you're definitely in a strong community of, um, you know, support. It's, uh, it's not a weird thing to want to open your spiritual gifts and powers. It's honestly and actually the most normal, insane thing that we can do because it's the biggest truth of the purpose of us incarnating and the biggest truth and purpose of, of being a human. It's to um, merge and actualize all components and aspects of us and to deny our spiritual side and spiritual truths is, is perhaps the biggest disservice of our own of our own being. So if you're hearing the call, you know, in whatever way speaks to you the most, and the starting point can be small. It can be what I mentioned before of like going into your favorite metaphysical bookshop or getting your first angel card deck or whatever it is, getting your first shamanic rattle or drum and just hitting the drum and remembering, you know, you don't have to know how to quote unquote, play the shamanic drum. It can be as simple as getting one and just hitting it and letting the drum is the heartbeat of our soul. So just sitting and playing, it can activate and open our chakras and open our, our wisdom truths within us. So it doesn't matter how big the start is, just begin. <laughs> Wow. Oh, that's so beautiful. And Allison, how do you work with people outside mm -hmm. of your book? And do you offer classes? Because as I'm organizing the circle of life community, I would just love to see how we might be able to call mm -hmm. you back in and benefit from it. Oh, that's so well. sweet. Thank you, sister. Yeah. Yeah. It's really been, um, a whole new crystalline structure has been emerging for me um, lately. I even feel it as I'm talking about it. I had been writing with my head down, you know, so focused because I did Animal Power Book and right after did Animal Power Card Deck, which will be out in the spring. And so I've been writing nonstop, like daily for years. Wow. And then once I got both those done recently, I was like, wait, I'm not writing anymore. What do I do? <laughs> Who am I? And so it's been this beautiful, like, emerging of this new 
information within me. And while um, in the past, I never was really a one on one shaman, I, I, I really primarily worked with huge audiences and groups and through media to, to get these consciousness uh, teachings out there in magazines, whatever. Mm -hmm. But lately, it's been intriguing, you know, people who have been reaching out, I did feel divinely called and instructed to, um, to sit with them. So I have been mentoring it seems like especially women who know they have a deep spiritual teacher calling or um, specifically a shamanic calling inside of themselves and really mentoring them um, typically for a six month journey to just hold mm -hmm. space and share guidance when um, I feel called to share or when invited in and, and to support mm -hmm. them on that path because it can be a very initiatory fiery one. Mm -hmm. So that mentorship has been happening. And I still give lots of talks. I'm giving a talk actually um, at a, a conference called Meet Delic. It's the world's premier psychedelic conference, which will be in early November in um, Las Vegas. And I'm sharing, you know, my personal stories of how yeah, I was many years on the shamanic path before uh, the spirits of plants called to me, um, because I think it's important for people to know you can open your gifts without having to um, mm -hmm. use uh, plant medicine. Um, and just sharing my personal views of, of how to do it in the most sacred honoring ways and how to surrender and open yourself up to it, but not force it. So I give talks and um, yeah, I can feel some new programs and, and offerings open up, opening up my partner, Luke's story and I, we have a, a brand called a uh, higher power couple. It's weird to call it a brand, but we give talks. We just gave a talk at the modern Nirvana conference on four cosmic codes to um, open yourself to divine partnership. So that's, there's that whole other uh, love and partnership thing that is in place as well. So, yeah. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then the podcast too, you know, Ceremony Circle, I just launched, I think in January, and it's been really beautiful to be able to have that longer form of expression. You know, it's so limited on Instagram and sometimes yeah. it's just a static <laughs> picture. So it's been nice for me, you know, in hour and a half interviews to be able to let people get to know me a little bit more there. Oh, that's beautiful. I love that. Well, we will put links to all of this in the show notes so that people can benefit from all of your wonderful sacred offerings and for sure get a copy of your book. It looks like a really beautiful coffee table type of book with beautiful artwork and images and things you can just kind of maybe even turn to a page and see what the message is for you. Definitely. And I, I guess the last thing I'll say, um, cause you did ask about like classes once um, a month, I have been partnering with different um, businesses that I have relationships with. Like I just did one with the alchemist kitchen that you oh. might know in New York city. Um, so once a month I am doing online, uh, shamanic journeys and classes and events. Uh, so those, those are on my website as well somewhere. <laughs> Oh, okay, great. Yeah. Yeah, so maybe we could invite you for one such online event in the future. Yes, exactly. Oh, that would be amazing. That would be so, so fun and enlightening and soulful and powerful. Yeah, well, thank you so much. I've had such a beautiful time getting to know you and just feeling the purity of your heart and just the way that you walk the path. It's so beautiful to get to know you. And I'm grateful for the invite to meet your community here. Oh, thank you so, so much. I so appreciate it. And I feel the same about you. I just, you know, I saw you on Instagram and I just felt this connection with you. And then the more I read, the more I felt it. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> I'm launching a podcast. I would love to talk to you. Amazing. And thank you so much for, for coming on and sharing. It's just, it's so tremendous what you're doing and how you are really modeling for people how to walk this path of being true to your highest self and your highest purpose. And it's something we all, I feel, are really being called to do these days, especially with everything having gone wrong, basically. And the veil cosmically, don't you feel the way the veil has really unveiled itself? It's very thin. <laughs> it's very thin, right? So people who may not have prior had all these insights or curiosities about a spiritual journey or going deep within now are like asking those questions. And I feel mm -hmm. that we are very much needed to be able to guide and support others and keep walking that 
path ourselves. And so connecting with someone like you who is so far along on your path is just really, really heartwarming and inspiring and just gives me this kind of warm feeling of solidarity and support and strength. And so I just really, really honor you and your journey and your wisdom and all of your connections with source and your guides and your power animals. And wow, thank you so, so much. This is such a sacred and special session we've had together. Thank you. I couldn't agree more. And I honor and see you too. Thank you so much for having me, sister. Thank you. Just stop the recording part.